In this video, we'll introduce you to the Turbo Workflow in ANSYS Fluent, where we'll set up a one and a half stage axial compressor. The Turbo Workflow allows us to easily set up a turbo machinery analysis within Fluent, where we can describe the type of turbo machine and its configuration, import the geometry, and define turbo-related mappings and physics conditions before finally creating the turbo-specific topology and reporting tools. For this video, the geometry will consist of the first three rows of a four and a half stage axial Hanover compressor, courtesy of TFD Hanover. We'll get started using the Fluent Launcher, where we'll select 3D, double precision, and in our case, we'll choose two solver processes. Then we'll click Start. Once Fluent has started, we'll enable the turbo workflow in the ribbon. We'll start the workflow by first describing the components. In this case, we're modeling an axial compressor. We'll rename the component itself to Hanover. Then we'll rename row one to IGV and set its type to stationary with 26 blades. We'll rename row two to R1 and set its type to rotating with 23 blades. And we'll rename row three to S1 and set its type to stationary with 30 blades. We do have a tip gap in the rotor, but not in the other components. So we'll select row one and row three and use the context menu to set the tip gap for both rows to no. We can visualize the machine we are planning to model using the schematic in the graphics window. Next, we'll click Describe Component. In the Define Blade Row Scope step, we'll define the scope of our blade row analysis. Here, we can optionally choose whether or not we want to include specific rows in our analysis. For this video, we want to model the whole machine, so we'll keep the defaults and click Define Blade Row Scope. In the Import Mesh task, we'll import the mesh. In our case, there are three turbo grid generated GTM files, one for the inlet guide vane, one for the rotor, and one for the stator. Once selected, we'll click OK to import the mesh files and add them to our workflow. Then we'll proceed on to the next task. In the Associate Mesh task, we can use the table to review the default associations between the cell zones and the rows. We can hover over any of the cell zones in the table, and we can see which parts of the mesh are associated with each row. We can see that each component's association needs to be changed accordingly. For instance, IGV's association needs to be changed to exclude the inlet and the IGV passage main, and so on. When we're done, we can click on Associate Mesh. In the Map Regions task, we'll map the different regions of the turbo machine. For each cell zone, we can use the table to review the default region mapping settings. Again, we can hover over any of the associated zones in the table, and we can see which regions are associated with them. For most GTM files created in TurboGrid, such as these, there should be minimal changes to make here. However, for the R1 passage main cell zone, there is a non-conformal tip gap present for the tip 1 region that we'll want to correct. For this region, we'll remove the problematic R1 BLD shroud tip face from the selection and only retain the R1 shroud tip GGI side 1 passage selection. Next, we'll want to go back to the blade region definition and add the R1 BLD shroud tip face zone to this region. We can review the rest of the setup to ensure that it's correct and we can click Map Regions and proceed to the next task. In the Create CFD Model task, we'll create a formal CFD model based on our geometry. Here we can define the number of blades for a component, say for a full 360 degree view, or apply one or more blade offsets and apply them to our CFD model. In our case, we'll keep the default values and click Create CFD Model. In this task, we'll define the physics for the turbo analysis. First, in Fluent, we'll change the units for angular velocity to revs per minute. Back to the workflow, we'll set the rotation speed to 17,100 revs per minute. We'll keep the default operating pressure and the default working fluid and click Define Turbo Physics. In this next task, we'll define the turbo-specific boundary conditions. We'll set the gauge total pressure to 60,000 pascal the total temperature to 288.15 Kelvin. The flow direction is set to normal to the boundary, and the gauge pressure at the outlet is 60,500 Pascal. We'll enable the radial equilibrium pressure distribution. Note that we can optionally choose to merge multiple blades per passage using the merge zones area, but for our purposes, we'll just proceed to click the Defined button. The last tasks are somewhat optional, 
and we can leave the workflow if we desire. But for this video, we'll demonstrate how easy it is to define the rest of our Turbo setup and facilitate post-processing. In the Define Turbo Topology task, we'll use the table to review the region definitions for the hub, shroud, and casing. We'll see everything is in order, so we'll click Define Turbo Topology. The next step allows us to create various ISO surfaces for turbo-specific post-processing. By default, we can create three ISO surfaces along specific constant spanwise locations. We'll rename our surfaces to be a bit more descriptive that includes the span value. Create the surfaces by clicking the Define Turbo Surfaces button. Finally, we can use the final step to easily create post-processing objects such as contour plots on our specified turbo surfaces, as well as turbo-specific report definitions and monitors, saving us the time and effort of having to manually create them in Fluent. We'll keep the default settings for the contour plots and click Create. That will then create contour plots as well as the turbo-specific report definitions and monitors. Now that we have completed the Turbo workflow, we can go to the Outline view and see that many of our material, cell zone, and boundary condition settings have already been determined using the workflow. We can review the named expressions that have been created for us, especially the rotational velocity, or the pressure ratio, or the number of passages for each component. Visiting the report definitions, we can see that the Turbo workflow has created a number of report definitions, including isentropic efficiency, pressure ratio, and so on. We can open each definition to review the settings. We'll go to the Monitor section of the Outline view, where we'll review the residual options. We'll keep the settings that were automatically optimized by the Turbo workflow. We can quickly expand the Report Files and Report Plots sections and review the specific reports and plots that were created by the Turbo workflow. Once initialized, we'll run the calculation. Once complete, we can review the final Monitor plots and the various contour plots created by the Turbo workflow. We can also review the named expressions. We can also recompute the report definitions as well. This concludes this introduction to using the Turbo workflow in ANSYS Fluent. Thanks for watching.